What's up, folks? A from ATEC Reviews here. Today I will be reviewing this balance deck from FX Audio. It's called the DS07. And uh, FX Audio is an old company. I bought their F DAC, F DAC X6, if I remember correctly. And it was recommended to me by a friend at work. And it, he said that it's great for, for easy to drive headphones. It's like an upgrade over your motherboard audio. I got it on Amazon for discount. It was like 40 bucks. And for the value, it's it's insane. Uh, that was a few years ago, actually. Uh, today, the brand seems to have changed. Uh, a lot of upgraded designs, upgraded components, upgraded performance, and even upgraded pricing. So with that said, let's look here at the box. As you can see, it says NFJ and FX Audio. I have no idea what NFJ is. Maybe the brand collaborated with another or they expanded. The box is pretty simple. You, um, you open it like, like so. And it says, good time. Welcome to FX Audio 2.0 era. Um, I kind of like understand now like FX Audio 2.0 because now I think they're trying. I don't know. Maybe I'm not correct, but I think they're trying to compete with brands like uh, Topping and SMSL. They still have their good pricing, but the performance is, is actually on, on par and the value is even better. Let's start with what you get first here. Uh, you get a USB type A to type B cable. Uh, it's very nice, it's gold plated. Maybe you can see that, so it's very nice. Color, I'm not really interested. Uh, or excited about but it's okay it will do the job no problem here and then you get like, your um, power cable uh, like this is like the North American one you should choose the one for like Europe or Japan I think or Australia each country has its own uh, term, uh, outlet and so on so this is the um, remote excuse me so this is the remote you get. Of course, they don't ship batteries. Um, most of the companies don't do that because shipping batteries uh, appears to be very difficult. Uh, they need like a lot of permissions and so on. I, I, I even face that when I try to buy products. Um, like if a product has battery, like, you know, it needs like extra protections and so on. So this is a remote and I don't know what this dash here means. Like it should stop at FX Audio, but anyway. And then we get to the DAC itself, which is wrapped in this, like, wrap. And let's see here what we get. You get just this normal. And here it is. Um, you get here the FX Audio and you get your DS DS07 high quality audio decoder. And here you get the infrared, which is the for the remote control. You get this um, rotary wheel encoder, which is for controlling the options here and for controlling the volume. So uh, on the right side, here you can see the feet are actually pretty strong, much better than other products in this price range. And here you get to the back and let's let's have a look here. You get two most important analog outputs. Um, left XLR analog output, right XLR power. Of course, this is, appears to be a switching power supply, 100 to 240V. And then you get your RCA left and right. Obviously, this is left and this is right. Um, anyway, it's the way it's designed. Um, then you get your coaxial input. You get your USB input gold plated you get your optical input and you get your bluetooth antenna which is right here actually i forgot if it's inside um so let me just do this and there you go let me stop it here so i will connect the power and return with the video all right i've connected the power output uh for this deck, to be completely honest, I've been using it for like two weeks before I get this review out. So I got these very nice XLR cables from FX Audio, uh, excuse me, from SKW. And I got some batteries in this beautiful remote and I'm going to turn it up for you. So um, let's see. 
you get 12 years. As I said, the brand is old, it's not new. And this is a screen you kind of get. Um, in this review, quickly, I will say a few things about it. Um, that's some five minutes, and it will include a comparison to the topping E50, which I bought this to replace. I will explain later why. First thing is the shape, which I will be completely honest. Is not the, if you're using this for desktop, it's not the best shape. I can understand that because unless you have something matching, uh, it will be like kind of rare and strange to fit in your setup. It, it's not the most aesthetic setup you can get. Now, with that said, uh, I bought this to put this and use it with speakers. And this kind of like safe space, this kind of shape or form factor, kind of safe space and kind of fits my use for, for it. But if I'm using it with an amplifier, not from them, but from another brand and I want it to fit, I think this will look a little strange. I kind of agree. Uh, at the same time, also, um, you get here in the back, if we compare this uh, to other amps in the same price range, you kind of get here two XLRs, full XLRs, not TRS. Uh, TRS cables, I don't use them a lot, although I have speakers that use them and musical instruments, but I like how sturdy the XLR cable is, how good, well, it fits. I've tested the Bluetooth here. It is the QCC5125, which is the latest or previous latest generation. As far as DACs are concerned, this is the latest uh, Bluetooth chip for Qualcomm. It is very good. Uh, no disconnections with the antenna. It's very good. Without the antenna, there is kind of disconnections. But with the antenna, the, the quality is very good and there's no disconnections or stuttering at all. <clears throat> now, um, this remote is one of the reasons I bought this uh, DAC because, see, it is very, very responsive. Uh, in contrast to the topping E50 that I use in this um, um, place here with the speakers, uh, the topping had one of two problems for me. One of the problems is as much as I love the topping, it didn't have a good remote range. So here, uh, this is something that is doesn't exist at all. This remote, you can just fire it up from anywhere. You see, I'm very far away from it with my hand. And it is so responsive and so great. Um, now, I've talked about the form factor here. Let me quickly tell you uh, how this screen works and how you can use it. Uh, obviously here, another thing is if you want to use this without the remote, which because I think it's essential, let me say the, quickly first, the filter is the first filter because this is an ES9068AS uh, DAC, uh, excuse me, uh, DAC chip. And it has only three filters, if I remember correctly. And the first one is the fast roll off. Uh, which is my personal preference for most decks. <clears throat> and you cannot uh, use uh, multiple inputs at the same time, and you cannot output XLR and RCE at the same time. Keep that in mind if this is something you care about. Uh, left and right, the volume, the rotary encoder, like adjust the volume, you go from 0 to 99. Now, if you just press once, it kind of mutes, and returns back if you keep pressing and holding it will take you to the menu um, you go to the menu and first thing is you press the input you get your usb optical coaxial and bluetooth and then you get return uh, bluetooth rematch i think they meant bluetooth repairing if you pair it with a device and you can see it or you have a problem connecting and so on output you get your rca or xlr as i said you only get to choose one option filter selection you get one two three uh, obviously uh, one is like minimum uh, first is like fast roll off second if i remember correctly it was like minimum phase and third is like a hybrid between no appetizing and so on brightness i choose 100 it came like 50 or less i think uh, from the factory dimmer is like when do you want this to turn off obviously i don't think this is an oled screen i like to keep it on, on all my decks honestly uh and then you get that's it so 
yeah, you get here this indicator for the input you're using and you get your PCM or DSD. And that's probably it, guys. So I will describe the sound quickly and then compare it to the topping E50. Sound quality here. Um, obviously, the ESS deck chip here is very good. And especially with Bluetooth, I think it shines in Bluetooth here. But I will be using this for my speakers uh, with XLR. And when I listen to it on headphones connected to the topping E90 and THX 789, and when I listen to it on my speakers, um, the sound is very good, and but it's not your typical ESS sharp sounding. It is good sounding, um, but not as detailed as something like the Topping E50, slightly less resolving, just very slightly. Uh, they say this supports MQA, I didn't try it. Um, but anyway, co coming back here at the sound, uh, it is neutral, although like slightly warmer, slightly, I mean slightly, uh, on the warmer side of things. It's not the sharp ESS sound we're used to, it's not the critical analytical listening Yes, a sound is actually very, very beautiful sounding and you can listen to it for hours with no fatigue, uh, no sibilance at all. And it's very nice uh, to be completely honest. And now I have nothing else to say here. They use very powerful OPA 1612 op amps. They do a job greatly. Um, I've, I've used it and let me compare it. Uh, with the sound signature of two things here. I have the G5, which uses the same deck chip, and I have the Topping E50, which uses the same deck chip. And I will compare it so that you can understand the functions and the differences and the pricing. Uh, the pricing for this, guys, is 199.99. And the differences between this and the Topping E50. Let's go. I like the Topping E50 a lot, but there's one thing in it that made me stop using it. And I will tell you what that is. But I like here first the display. The display on the Topping E50 is kind of bigger. You can get to see more from far away. But you kind of see the sample rate. You don't like see the volume unless you get it to the uh, preamp point. This also works as a preamp. But, and the screen is smaller, so it's not obvious as the E50. But you, it's like colorful and maybe because of daylight you can see it. You get to see a few things here more. So that's there. Um, the sound signature alone, if you want to hear that, the topping is more detailed, but it's more sharp. I would say that, yes, it is the ESS sound. It's like razor sharp. Uh, it, there is some, it, sometimes it's uncomfortable for me or fatiguing, if you could say that. Here, this problem is resolved completely. I don't know what they did, like, because the THD plus N is like 0 0.000, like 15. So, it's, it's almost 120 dB here, like this is very good. Um, another thing here is the wireless uh, audio. The E50 doesn't have Bluetooth. This one has 5.1 Bluetooth. Yes, we have 5.3 and 5.4, but obviously here it will not offer anything more um, uh, because here you get two things that matter. You get the LDAC support and aptX um, LL support, low, lower latency and adaptive support also at the same time. Of course, also you get aptX and AAC and so on. So it works great. Um, they use the same USB XMOS um, USB chip. But here I will tell you what something that made me prefer this to the Topping E50. Two things actually. The first thing is the full XLR that could be used here. Yes, I have TRS cables. I don't like them to be honest. They're not as stable in my setup. I need the stability uh, of the XLRs and I have a lot of XLR cables. I don't have TRS cables um, in the same amount. So I have to buy them and I have to buy them like terminated to XLR because not everything I have supports TRS. Obviously an added cost. Another thing here is when I play music and I press play and pause, if I press the mute, the mute here starts gently. It's not sudden. That's number one. Number two is the topping had a problem for me that it made popping noises every time I stop music or it goes into standby, which I cannot control. 
So on speakers, and of course the speakers are active speakers and they're using high gain, the sound was like a popping noise that I felt could destroy my headphones or could destroy my uh, speakers. Um, I didn't like that. There are a few workarounds, but they, they never work for me in a reliable way. I don't want to destroy my expensive speakers just because a $200 DAC uh, has that problem. Here, there is a protective muting relay. Every time you turn it on and off, like you can hear it even. Um, maybe you can't hear it now. I have to connect it and play it, but it, it, even when I press play and pause on the PC, like you kind of hear that. So that means zero popping noise. I have Bluetooth, I have XLRs, and I have the same DAC chip and like a very smaller package, which I'm going to use, and an excellent responsive remote. This makes me use it much more in the topping E50 and made me uh, choose this one. Obviously, I'm not going to throw the topping E50 away. It's very good. It's one of my favorite decks at this price range, and I'm going to continue using it. Um, but I will be honest, it will be connected to L50, and you know that that's the setup I'm going to use for some IMs or something like that. I'm going to be testing it with. Um, this doesn't have any amplifiers, but there is that. So $199, you get this excellent balance deck, full XLR, no problems. Uh, before I forget, if any of you guys buy this and you're going to be using it in your PC from Windows, I recommend that you install the drivers from their website because after you do that, um, you will uh, it will unlock like something like DSD playback, an SEO uh, playback for FUBAR, if any of you guys use that. And actually it will be, um, for Windows at least, it will be seen and recognized as FX audio speakers. Like before that it was, I can't remember, but it was something else, just regular speakers, something like that. So that's something to say. Um, that's it. This has been the review of the FX audio DSO7. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment. And until then, see you on the next one.